Hi, uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Tom Harry. I've been with the county for about 31 years, and I'm the principal planner for current planning. Um, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about uh, neighborhood meetings. Uh, I personally always like to find out how we got to where we are at. Um, neighborhood meetings were initially adopted in October of 1996. Uh, the primary reason we adopted those requirements was um, the 120 day rule which requires the county to process uh, urban development applications within 120 days. Uh, that rule also requires us to process rural applications within um, 150 days. Uh, just to give you a little idea of what it was like in the 1990s when I was actually here then, um, the uh, type two, we, we were under, we were receiving a very large number of applications in the neighborhood of 700 applications a year. So um, it was taking us approximately 90 days to review a type two urban development application to get to the decision point. Um, then if that, that decision was appealed, it was appealed to the hearings officer. Hearings officer, um, in the best of times, would take at least 45 days to get to the hearings officer, and then you add on to that whatever time the hearings officer needed to make a decision. Then if you, um, if it was appealed, if the hearings officer's decision was appealed, then it was appealed to the, to the Board of County Commissioners, and that would take a minimum of 30 to 40 days to get that onto the agenda. So even in the best case scenario, we were looking at 165 to 170 days to get an application reviewed and, and approved, um, get, get them through the process. So uh, what happened at that time was we decided, figured out a couple of things. One would be that it would, it would be helpful to get the um, get neighborhoods and the public involved in the process a little earlier. And number two, um, to shorten the appeal uh, process. Uh, so what, what happened was we added the, the neighborhood meeting uh, requirement that was for prior to issuing submittal of the development application and um, we removed the board from the appeal process. Uh, as I was going to say, the, the goals uh, for having neighborhood meetings, number one was it was to help the applicant identify um, is issues with a development uh, prior to submitting that proposal. Um, and, and it was also, that kind of goes along with the um, providing the neighbors with the opportunity to participate in the process a little earlier than when we send out the first public notice. Um, so those two things combined um, helped helped both the, in our, in our opinion, helped both the developer and the neighbors uh, find out a little bit more about the issues that were going on in the neighborhood as well as what the, what the applicant was proposing. Um, it also helped staff identify uh, applications that might have um, what I call special challenges. Um, in other words, issues with that the neighbors uh, have brought up at the neighborhood meeting that, that when we review the neighborhood meeting notes, we can see that there were a large number of people that came to the meeting. They had several issues with the proposed development. It allowed us the opportunity to perhaps um, elevate that application and, and to actually direct go directly to the hearings officer as opposed to making an initial decision in the process there and that again helps us to, to make sure that we um, meet that last goal which was to meet the 120 day processing requirements um, this is a if you want to see the specific requirements in the community development code they're under section 203 uh, section 203-3.2 identifies what types of development are required um, to have a neighborhood meeting. As you can see in the urban area, it's just about all of, all of the applications that we get for, um, 
for urban development require a neighborhood meeting. Um, I want to point out one change right here. Um, and that, that change was actually the, one, of the one of the main changes that has occurred over the last um, well, 20 years or so since we adopted this. And that was a requirement to, um, the way the code is set up, it, it originally required, if you were doing a commercial, industrial, or institutional development that abutted a residential district, then you had to do a neighborhood meeting. Um, we, we've changed that recently, as in um, a couple months ago, to require that if, if the proposed development is within 125 feet of a, of a residential neighborhood, then that you, that you have to have a neighborhood meeting. So that, that's really the primary change that's occurred over the last 20 years or so. Is that a physical proximity? Because you could have a huge campus. And uh, it's property lines. So it is property lines. It is property lines. So yeah, if you, if you have a very large site um, and you're doing your development over here, but the site goes all the way to over here and there's residential across the street, then you have to do the neighborhood meeting. Um, I'm not going to go into the rural uh, side very much, but uh, there's also uh, some there's also a neighborhood requirement, uh, neighborhood meeting requirements for um, some developments that occur outside of the rural area. <coughs> this is uh, I don't know how many of you are familiar with it, but this is the neighborhood meeting packet. We do have some available right outside the door where you where you signed in. This is what it looks like. It's also available online. Um, we have them available at the counter. When we have pre-application conferences, we generally hand them out um, at that time uh, so that uh, you have a guideline on how to do the neighborhood meeting. The first page, page of that um, is broken into two sections. The first are the, the items that have to be included in your notice when you mail the notice to, to the neighbors. Um, and the second is a list of the items that are in the neighborhood meeting packet. I'm gonna go through that, the second part first. Um, there's a sample letter on how to do neighborhood meeting or, or on, to give you an idea of how, how to, what kind of letter you should send out to your neighbors. You don't have to, have to follow that specifically, but it is a guideline and, and strongly recommended. Um, there's also, uh, as you can see, there's some other uh, numerous things that are intended to help you um, do your neighborhood meeting. Uh, along with one of the things that's in there is a guideline for holding successful neighborhood meetings, um, which uh, we we think has been very helpful for people who don't who don't do neighborhood meetings very often. Um, and then there's a checklist that if you go through this checklist and check off every every box, you'll make sure that you cover all your bases for when you when you hold your neighborhood meeting and then um, when you submit your development application. Uh, we've included a, a sample of. of the public notice sign that you post on the property that um, shows the, the things you need to state on that public notice. Um, you also need to keep a list of the people who come to the neighborhood meeting um, along with that, that sign-in sheet um, for people. There's also, um, we also require you to keep notes of the neighborhood meeting so we know what was discussed. Um, and then the, the last page of the handout is a mailing list request, which you can sub, which you submit to the county, and for no charge, we will give you a list of, uh, if in the urban area, of all property owners within 500 feet of your development. If it's a rural property, then it's all uh, neighbors, property owners within 1,000 feet of the development. 
there are a few common errors that people make when they do the neighborhood meeting. Um, the first one is not requiring all the, not including all of the required notice materials in the public notice or the neighborhood meeting notice, um, which this, as I said on earlier, the first page um, talks specifically about what is required on the neighborhood meeting notice. First thing is the, the letter that lets people know what it is you're doing, where the meeting's going to be, um, and some other pertinent information. Second thing would be a map of the property. Um, the bottom map that you see there is something that you will actually get from the county when um, we prepare your mailing list for you. So um, that's actually the one that most people use is that map when they send out the um, neighborhood meeting notice. Um, then there's a, a attachment, two-page attachment that um, welcomes people to the neighborhood meeting and lets people know kind of what they can expect at the neighborhood meeting. And then finally, there's a, a um, summary of what a development application, um, the process that development applications go through, um, and that helps people know where they are in the process and what's going on. Um, the second, and by the way, uh, one of the things when you hold your name, when you send out that notice, uh, one of the people you're required to notify well, is the county. And we do have staff who look at those, those notices to make sure that you've included everything. And, um, and some of the common uh, mistakes that people make when they do their neighborhood meeting, um, we're looking for. And if you make them, we will give you a call, send you an email or something to let you know, hey, wait a minute, you forgot something, um, you either need to reschedule or you need to figure out a way to correct that, that issue. Um, the second thing is holding the neighborhood meeting outside the CPO or holding the neighborhood meeting on the same night as the CPO meeting. Um, the, it's not uncommon for people to, when they had first start doing neighborhood meetings, to not know exactly what the CPO looks like and, ident and where they identify a place to hold their neighborhood meeting turns out to be outside the CPO. And we do look at that when, when we're reviewing the neighborhood meeting notice. The um, next thing is mailing out the notice. The, the, the code requires you to mail out the notice um, 21 days or more before the um, before you hold the neighborhood meeting. Well, um, oftentimes people say, okay, do we get to count the day that we mail the notice or do we start counting the day after? Um, does the day that you hold the neighborhood meeting count as part of the 21 days? Um, what we do is we generally recommend to people, if you're going to hold the meeting on, say, Thursday, December, or October 26th, then we strongly recommend that you, uh, we, we tell you to mail out the notice on the Thursday three weeks before, which would be October 5th. Uh, the next thing is holding the neighborhood meeting at a location that's not open to the public. And um, that may seem weird to you, but um, a, an example of that would be holding the neighborhood meeting at a restaurant um, or a bar where they require you to um, buy something in order to be there. Well, that's not open to the public. So you need to hold it at a, a location that's open to the public. It can be a private residence. It can be the location um, where your the proposed development is occurring. Um, but you, you need to make sure that it is open to the public at least on the night that you're holding that neighborhood meeting. Um, another, uh, this one doesn't happen very often, but it does occur. Um, 
usually we don't figure it out until we've accepted the application and are looking at the development and looking at um, the, the neighborhood meeting and realize that the developer has added an additional parcel to the proposed development that was not included when they did the original neighborhood meeting. If that occurs, then you will either have to take that parcel out, so or you need to have another neighborhood meeting. And um, the final one is um, one where uh, the, the neighborhood meeting mailing list is good for 45 days. And um, typically what people do is they come in for the pre-application conference, they sit down, they have the pre-application conference, then um, while they're there, they take the last page off, they fill it out, they turn it in, um, they get the, the uh, mailing list the next day, or they might actually be able to wait and get it right there while they're waiting for it. Um, and then they go back and spend 60, 90 days putting together their, their development application, trying to get ready, and um, all of a sudden they discover, oh wait, it's been more than 45 days since I got the, the mailing list, so I need to redo the mailing list, um, so they send it back to us. We've had a few cases where we've made mailing lists for people five or six times. Um, it happens. Um, we're happy to do the mailing list again, but we strongly recommend that you wait until you're ready to schedule the meeting to actually um, get the mailing list from us. Are there any questions?